What's going on YouTube? Freedom here. I wanted to jump on and talk about the ground generals, PVP, uh, presets, generals, all the good stuff, <clears throat> when to use them, how to use them. So let's go ahead and dive right in. When it comes to, to ground PVP, to me, it really all begins with the right generals. And the only two that really stick out um, is number one, Scipio. Uh, which he's a coin general for the most part. He is in the Redeem Generals right now. Uh, if you're watching this and it's already passed, that sucks for you. <laughs> but uh, you definitely want to get him or keep an eye out for him. Um, the second best is going to be Trajan or Trajan. Um, you can get him out of the tavern. Um, he's not as good as Scipio, um, but he does have the second best stats when it comes to HP and attack on his, uh, you know, his native skills. So... We're going to use Scipio as an example, uh, just because he is the reigning ground PvP general right now. Um, as far as gear goes, um, I've got the set bonuses for Ares, which gives 15% attack, and then I got the two pieces uh, for 10% attack on the Akamenide gear. Um, with Scipio, the dragon that I like to use that most people use is the Wonder One dragon, because it has a couple of debuffs on it, and you can put some ground refines on it too, on the actual dragon. Ebony has claimed that at some point they will have a dragon that has native ground stats on it. As of right now, they don't have one. Um, so the Wonder One dragon is a good filler for that at this moment in time. So, you know, you know skill books is pretty standard, you know, ground troop attack, defense, HP. Um, but I, before I dive into the, the mechanics of this, I just want to give you guys some examples on how effective ground can be. And it's really about com combating against those who are really heavy uh, in, in siege and heavy and also uh, archers. Um, you're going to see it in the evolution of the game that a lot of people, they stir away from, from calves, they ghost them, um, you know, which, is, which is okay. Um, but if you've got only a range march then, and people are ghosting calves, then you're going to run into a problem because you're going to send a bunch of range troops into you know, ground and siege and they're going to you know, get wrecked. So when, I, when it comes to ground, I use them for players that are really heavy in archers and, and siege because, I mean, ground just decimates uh, everything when it comes to archers and siege. And this is from my experience anyway. Now, in order for you to actually get to someone's archers or siege, if they had their calves ghosted, you're going to have to go through their ground first. So sometimes I got to send one march and it's just kind of like ground versus ground. Um, most people don't put an emphasis on ground stats on their wall gen, so it's not too difficult. And through Akamenide gear, there is a lot of debuffs uh, for ground HP and defense. Um, Gear-wise, there's nothing for debuffs for, for ground attack. You can't really lower somebody's attack. That's all through mayors, uh, really, in your subsidy generals. But um, I want to give you guys some examples on the situations that I do use ground. I don't believe ground is the best, like end all be all. Like this is the first thing that I'm going to build because there's too many, you know, or too many range players out there or cat players out there too. But this is more of a, a a niche, if you are a niche, where you know I want to have this in my my toolbox. So depending on who I'm going up against, I have a, a solution for anything that I may run into. Uh, but let's go ahead and just dive into some reports here to give you guys some examples of how effective ground can be if used in the right situation. So let's pull up some reports. These are players that just either all their cab are gone, they're ghosted, but this is the time that I implement a ground march. And just to give you some examples, uh, you know, I took 204 mil power, I lost 35 mil, and this is all ground, just getting rid of all their siege, their, their, you know, the ground troops that they have and the arches that they have. In most cases, people just don't have a lot of high stats. Uh, for ground um, in general. The emphasis is always range and siege. So it's kind of a, I think it's a really underestimated march type um, for earlier servers anyway. I think that those who have been playing the game a while are probably up to speed on all this stuff. But um, if you're watching this channel, that probably doesn't apply to you. <laughs> so, um, you know, when it comes to, to ground attack, in most, in most cases, you know, ground versus ground. And again, to get to an enemy's you know, siege and archers, you're going to have to go through their ground first. Um, in most cases, you're going to have a leg up. 
is higher buffs. Um, and then of course, you know, debuffs are going to be pretty standard too, based off tech. Um, and then also the manners that you have. So like ground debuffs, not really high, 118%, you know, 140 and 133, still better than theirs. So that's the, the outcome in the report. Uh, let's give you a, a few more examples. So we've got 3.3 mil to 98 mil, they lost. We've got 16 mil to 159 mil. 20 mil to 180 mil. 11 mil to 382 mil. So as you can see with this example, you know, this player 472 mil power. I mean, he had nothing but like archers and, and siege. Not a lot of ground either, because I just would have lost more ground troops having to eat through that ground, you know, layer in order to get to the, the you know, their archers or siege. So I'm just going to see if I have any more examples. Let's see. We'll just go ahead and stop there. So to see the example, if, uh, if you do, a, if you scout somebody and you're not seeing any calves in there, and you feel that you have a big enough march size and ground that you can, you know, send them march out. It doesn't matter how many archers or how many seas they have, like ground is going to get in there and just wreak havoc. So I just want to show you guys, you know, anything that I, I try to teach on YouTube, I do like to give you like real time examples uh, of things that I've personally done. Like it's not so much of theory, it's just, you know, application and, and things that I've actually put forth in the game um, that I like to share with you guys. So, um, let's go ahead and uh, look at a March preset when it comes to ground. Now, I still follow the, the same, you know, rules of a 20, 30, 40 percent uh, troop type, you know, from T14, T13 to 12. I mean, if you if your highest tier is 13, then you're going to do 11, 12, 13. If your highest tier is, you know, 12, you're going to do, you know, 10, 11, 12. Um, but at, say, 2.1 million March, you know, I got 400k T13, a little over 600,000 on my T13, and then 1 million T12. So it's right around the same margins of 20%, 30%, and 40% on, on layers. And then, of course, uh, you know, everything outside of ground is going to be 1,000 going all the way down. All the troops, all the tiers. And see, this is why you test this. Because my march recently increased and I overcompensated it with 12s, thinking that this was going to be in there. So you can kind of pick your poison on this, right? On your march presets, I usually set these with a buff march because anytime I'm in. SVS on the enemy server, or if I'm in battlefield, I automatically pop a senior buff march. Now, some will you know recommend that you set this at the like your base march without any buffs. But I mean, speed is king in this game too, uh, because you know if you if you have the opportunity to attack somebody, I don't really want to have to go in here in that moment and decide you know what I want to send. Sometimes it's good you know if, they, if they're a smaller player and you don't want to you know overkill, but I just like to you know, you know, pop a buff march and then be able to, um, you know, just attack and I have to worry about presets or whatnot. So uh, I don't want to waste you guys this time. I'll go back and fix this, but it's a thousand troops all the way down. So if I'm using ground, the only time I'm going to use it is if I scout somebody and I can see that that person doesn't really have a lot of calves, you know, in their actual keep or they're ghosting them. It's just kind of like the finishing touch, if you will. My advice is do not just make, yeah, if you make Scipio, if you make ground at the very beginning, say of a server creation, you know, everybody's going to be calves. So you're not going to have any advantage whatsoever. And then when you get into to actual like SVS or PVP, you know, if you're going up against K30s or K33s, the bulk of them are still going to be cab players. So this is more, I would recommend probably right around six months uh, of being up on your server or even like the order of prior priority that I went with this was, you know, I started with range first and then once range was good, I started working on defense in my wall gen 
and then also working on debuffs, um, you know, with my, you know, Akamenade gear and, you know, my subsidy generals. Um, and then I was like, okay, now I want to be versatile. You know, when I scout somebody, I want to have the ability to hit them from different angles, depending on what's going to be like the best case scenario. That's where ground really shines. Um, also really shines in, in throne wars because the bulk of anybody that takes you, you know, your throne or that's sitting in your throne, you know, they're not going to put a bunch of cavalry in there. You know, they're going to put archers, they're going to put siege, they may put some ground in there. Um, having ground, I mean, I recommend anybody that wants to protect their throne within your alliance to have eight to 10 million ground, you know, T13, T14, T12, some type of combination to be able to always defend yourself. Because again, when somebody takes your throne, they're not going to be putting calves in there because calves just have like that stigma of like boss rallies. Um, I'm a, our server is only six months in. I do believe that is going to evolve into more like, you know, hey, everybody's got ground. So now calves is going to make a comeback at some point. Um, but best, you know, balance is important, you know, with anything, you know, end game, best case scenario, you've got range, you've got ground, you've got cab, you've got siege bombs. But again, the order of priority is going to be based off, you know, what's going to be the most useful ground, I don't believe is the best thing to make to start. I think it's just more of like rounding out like your attack. Um, because you are going to run into players that are just really heavy on archers, really heavy on siege. Um, to where if you have this in your in your arsenal, it's going to make you that that much more effective. So uh, that covers the presets. Um, even on the debuffs for ground, you're going to notice on all the gear that there is there's no ground attack on any of the gear. You can debuff ground HP, ground defense, because natively that is what the highest attributes are for ground. I mean they're sturdy. I mean they are really really sturdy. Um, they're, they're, you know, range are actually pretty squishy in comparison to ground just based off the, the HP and defense difference. Um, but there's not a lot that you can, that anybody can do about ground attack, unless you actually build out, you know, if you've got, you know, seven to nine, you know, subsidies that you can hold, you can build out debuffs for ground. Um, you can use uh, Constantine the Great. He's one of the few that has like decent ground attack debuffs, but you really need to like stack a ton of Constantine the Greats. Honda's another one. Um, Harold gives you just the 10%. I don't think it's enough having nine of him to really do enough debuffing to, to be worthwhile. Um, but ground is a very unique uh, troop type in general in regards to its use. It's really great for defense. It's really good to have in your keep, which is kind of a, a double bonus, if you will. Because as you're building out like your March presets, um, and that's something I that's that's always been my approach is like, all right, I'm gonna build my attack. I'm gonna, what do I need to attack somebody to be effective? All right, well, I knocked it out with ranged. Okay, now I want to build out my ground PvP mark so I can attack players and that you know aren't really cab heavy or that are ghosts and cabs. Now, as you're building these ground troops, you know, for your PvP march. Now you got a bunch of ground troops sitting in your keep, which it's it's one hand washes the other, if you will, because when archers come to attack you, you can ghost your cabs. And guess what? They're going to run into a bunch of ground, which is great. So you know, it, there's a, a, you know a couple of different angles that this is going to benefit your overall performance wise. Defense, it's going to benefit you know being able to attack players that are not really cab heavy. And then overall being able to protect your throne, because again, for the most part, people that are going to try to conquer you, it's going to be really heavy siege and, and, and archers. Um, so I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, if you have any questions, just ask them in the comments below, like and subscribe. Um, I, I have a, a few more ideas and content that I'm going to put out too. Um, but with ground, you know, recommendations, the recap, I wouldn't make this as your first. If you do have Trajan, my recommendation on that too is build them, like cultivate them, put some skill books on them. I wouldn't put any, any specs into them though. Anytime that I'm kind of iffy about any general, the biggest commitment you can ever make to your general is going to be the specialties because those, those room chests are just, they're really hard to come by. Even by coining, they're just, you know, they're probably the rarest item or that you can get in this game. 
So if you really overcommit to one general that you know is this kind of a filler, like you, you, so this is say you do coin somewhat and you are going to make an effort to get Scipio, then whoever you, you're using for ground, cultivate them, you know, five star them. I wouldn't put any specs into them. This, you can use, use the same advice for like your range general or your wall general too. Um, I'm kind of undecided with that uh, on my wall gem between Zachary Taylor and, uh, and, and Johnston, but I'll, I'll, I'll put some content out on defense coming up here soon. But if you've got Trajan, use them. I wouldn't spec them, you know, get Scipio. He's in the redeem general right now. Um, unless Evan, introduces a, a new general, which I'm sure they will right now. Scipio is the reigning ground, you know, PVP King, um, because of his native stats. So, um, you know, keep this in mind as you're building out, you know, your well-rounded, you know, attacking. Range is great, but honestly, in my opinion, I think ground is even better because in PvP, you're not going to, you know, that's the people that have a lot of calves, they're going to get phased out pretty quickly. You know, they have a couple of SVSs and then they just get smoked and then they're just like, okay, I'm going to have to bubble. And then the, the main people that are the most active, you know, in SVS are the players that, are ranged and if you want to answer to that um ground pvp is the way to go but hope you guys are having a good day let, let me know your thoughts and feedback and uh, i'll see you guys on the next video